Today, I am going to take you through my Japanese home. This is where I live. Every Japanese home has a genkan. It's basically a home for your shoes. It's to make sure that you uh, separate your outdoor shoes from your indoor shoes. Some genkans, like mine, are really deep. Some people put their tools in here or emergency kits should they need to evacuate in an emergency. Now, I personally prefer a more shallow genkan. I think, like I've literally tripped into my genkan. Feels like a bit of a safety hazard, but um, it is what it is. Next up, we have the living room. There's a couch for the guests. And this is my kotatsu, which I actually got from a coworker for free. Phenomenal. Um, just a place for me to study Japanese and work hard. There's a couple of nails in the wall. I don't know if that's like there on purpose or the previous tenant put it in there, but yeah, place for me to hang my clothes. This is uh, my official ID to prove I'm not just a strange foreigner walking around a rural village in Japan. I, I do belong. So one thing you'll notice in Japanese homes is they rarely have a dishwasher. So there's no dishwasher. I wash all my dishes by hand and I have an abnormally large sink. Most houses also have a gas conro or a gas stove. So under here you've got like a grill. So this is where you can grill fish. This is where I toast my bread in the morning. And then you've got two gas burners. So got my fridge, my little bin, microwave, blender, rice cooker. It's a must, gotta have a rice cooker. And then we've got the world's greatest electrical circuit. Um, this one foreign adapter has been going very strong, but it's like cracked here. And I'm just, I'm just like, I'm not gonna touch it. This, this is working. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is my bathroom area. So, got my wash basin, the, I was gonna say dishwasher, but um, my washing machine. Um, over here we've got the shower, and next to that we've got a bathtub, which I desperately need to clean. So actually, I left that window open, and then there was like very heavy rain and. Some of it got in here and the plug was in. So yeah, that's my bad. Then we have upstairs. There's a bit too much room. Like I don't know what to do with all this space. Um, this is my bedroom, this is where I sleep. This is where I was filming the skit this morning. So I um, have not done my bed. Uh, this is my clothes rack. And this is the greatest plushie of all time. And then here is like my secondary working space. So like my study room. Um, but it's pretty empty now. So I used to have stuff up here during summer because this is where my air conditioner is um, And it was too hot so I'd stay upstairs all the time, but now I can relax downstairs a bit more. Here's a plant that I am, am neglecting. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. This is an old chair that my uh, previous the previous person who was living here left me. It's um It's probably seen better days, so I don't really use it uh, These are the curtains that I bought without measuring. So I'm just stuck with oversized curtains and because I didn't want to go back to the store and explain to them in my broken Japanese that I'm an idiot. Yeah, I just kept them. And they're also not long enough. So it kind of stops here and stops here. So um, things not to do when you're in Japan. Now you might be wondering how much do I pay for this place where I live? And the answer is not a lot. The rent for the house is 52,000 yen. I receive a subsidy of 23,500 yen from my workplace. So I'm only paying 28,500 yen per month. This works out to roughly 303 Australian dollars or 191 American dollars. Personally, I think that's a great deal living in the Inaka. It's one of the perks. If on the other hand, you end up working in a big city like Tokyo or Osaka, your rent could be as high as 90,000 yen per month. So there's a clear trade-off between living in the big city and the Inaka. With the big city, it's really easy to get around, there's lots of transport available, but your rent is really high with limited support from your workplace. In the Inaka, your rent is lower, but it is a little bit more difficult to get to places you may want to go. So it really depends on what you're looking for. For me, personally, I find that living in the Inaka gives me a more authentic Japanese experience. Is there anything else you want to know about the home that I'm living in, or living in Japan generally? If you already live in Japan, how much rent do you pay? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.